It's almost like a dream for Jan Michael Gamble as all the top seeds have fallen. He finds himself in the finals today looking for his first career win. Across the net, the other half of the dream finds 18-year-old Leighton Hewitt of Australia ready to climb his highest mountain yet, wishing and hoping to bring home an American trophy. It's the future of American and Australian tennis slugging it out for the championship of the Franklin Templeton Classic today in our own little dreamland, the incomparable Scottsdale Princess. Last night's semifinal action, the number three seed, Andre Agassi, looking to defend his title here in the desert, goes right for a volley and pulls a hamstring in his right thigh. Agassi hangs in several games later, again to his right, and more pain as he can hardly hobble around on the baseline. And then suddenly the match is over. 5-4, Agassi has to retire, and so Jan Michael Gamble moves into the finals. From the Canadian Pacific, Scottsdale Princess Resort in Scottsdale, Arizona, Mercedes-Benz presents the ATP Tour on Fox Sports Net. Today, the finals, Jan Michael Gamble of the United States taking on Leighton Hewitt of Australia. Good afternoon, everybody. Barry McKay with you on our fourth consecutive weekend of coverage on Fox Sports Net, the ATP Tour. You talk about unpredictability over these past four weeks. Unbelievable happenings, injuries, defaults, withdrawals have created a bizarre atmosphere as we've covered the winter spring portion of the tour. And today, we're in the desert. It never rains here, right? In February, 20 minutes ago, a downpour on center court. And so you just never know what's going to happen in these early segments of the ATP Tour. Let's have a look now and see how the seeds fared this week here. Andre Agassi, the number three seed, into the semifinals, loses to Gamble, has to retire last night. And Gamble knocks off the number one seed, Pete Sampras, in the round of 16. Leighton Hewitt, the countryman of Patrick Rafter, knocks him off early as well. Let's have a look at the draw now from the quarterfinals on. Gamble up on top, knocked off Gamble's top, a very tough match to move into the semis. Then last night, a win over Agassi, although he didn't like the way it happened. And in the bottom half, Hewitt knocks off his countryman, Woodford, in the other semifinal. Well, it has been a bizarre week, Leif Shires. Your courtside, what about these two young players? How do they look down there, Leif? Well, Barry, they look good, and conditions look good as well. There's only a slight breeze. The court is perfectly dry, so hopefully we've seen the last of the rain. I talked to Darren Kale, Leighton Hewitt's coach, before the match, and he was saying how Leighton Hewitt was feeling a little bit toey, which I guess is Australian for fatigued or tired. Remember, Leighton Hewitt came through the qualifying, he had to play two qualifying matches, and then get through the main draw to get to his third ATP Tour final. Also, look for Leighton Hewitt to keep Jan Michael Gamble out of the red zone or the middle of the court where he can tee off on balls. So Darren Cahill getting some strategy across to his young charge. Jan Michael Gamble in the player's lounge very relaxed as he hung out with his younger brother. They were just sitting talking. So I think Jan Michael Gamble has gained some valuable experience playing Davis Cup for the U.S. He really can handle the pressure. And I think he's more relaxed than he was playing his opening round match here in Scottsdale. So it should be a great matchup of some of the best young players on tour. Are we looking at Davis Cup 2003, the U.S. versus Australia? This crowd, I think, is going to pull for the American player. Barry, back up to you. All right, Leaf. Well, I thought the 49ers were the only group that worried about the red zone. We'll watch it closely today. Jan Michael Gamble knows a lot about his opponent today. Here's what he had to say about the sensational 18-year-old from Australia. Leighton Hewitt's one of the most tenacious guys in the tour right now. I think that he just uh, doesn't give up on any ball on any point, doesn't let you have free points at all, returns as good as anybody right now, and just is, is mean out there. You know, he doesn't give up, and it, he's tough. He's going to be a good player. He's a good player. He is a good player, and we've got a big championship match coming up. We're at the Canadian Pacific Scottsdale Princess Resort. Leighton Hewitt warming up, going against Jan Michael Gamble. We'll have it for you. The championship match next on Fox Sports Net. Excitement in the air here at center court. Jan Michael Gamble going against Leighton Hewitt. This is Leighton Hewitt, the 18 year old sensation from Adelaide, Australia, taking some final warm up serves before this championship match. Well, we had a chance to hear from Greg Johnson, who is with Franklin Templeton Group. Hi, my name is Greg Johnson of the Franklin Templeton Group of Mutual Funds, and I'd like to welcome you to the 1999 Franklin Templeton Tennis Classic. Sit back and enjoy the finals. 
Greg we will do just that this should be some kind of a match between two of the best young players in the world Jan Michael Gamble what's going through Jan Michael Gamble's head right now as he gets ready for this big match Lee well I remember my first final and as confident and as good you feel I mean, you have to be feeling a little bit of nerves I mean it's a, it's a big moment certainly Jan Michael Gamble great size for a tennis player 6 3 with a big serve age 21 Colbert Washington out of Spokane ATP ranking of 45 and he'll move up into that 30 range with the win here today. Good start to this year. Again played Davis Cup for the United States and uh, I think that helped him a lot here in his preparation for this final. Two young guys going at it. I think the pressure might be off him more if he'd played a, an Andre Agassi or a Pete Sampras in the final. But he's again he's playing a young player like himself. Came through first three matches losing the opening set. Scolari, Sampras and Gimmelstab. So it shows that he is a fighter and of course the semifinal against Agassi where Agassi retired his opponent today 18 year old from Adelaide Australia Leighton Hewitt a man who we have not seen that much of in the United States one of the best ground strokers in the business league. Well he's not a tall guy but he's got a pretty good serve trying to improve that rank 91 he's going to move up into the 60s if he can win this match. So he will have a career best ranking oh. after this event. And what a start to 99. A finalist in Adelaide this year losing to Enquist. And here we go. We are ready. First game. First set. This is best of three for the championship. And Jan Michael Gamble opens up very solidly. Jumps all over a short ball. Knocks it off for a winner. 15 love. Again, those two balls in the red zone, as Darren Cahill calls it, where Gamble can lean in and drive the ball. Boy, this is a great start for Gamble. When you can win your serve comfortably in the opening match, it really sets the tone for how you feel about the rest of the match. On the center, a big serve, and Jan Michael Gamble wins a very quick game on his own serve. Up one love for seven. Tennis Classic Championship match. Jan Michael Gamble going against Leighton Hewitt. I'm Barry McKay along with Leif Shires bringing you the match on Fox Sports Net. This is Leighton Hewitt serving down Love One in the opening set. This is best of three for the title. Hewitt has fought through some pretty tough matches to get to this final. Again, he has not lost a set, and he did not lose a set in any of his qualifying matches. Norman, Rafter, Golmart, and convincingly against Woodford in the semifinals. Just why? We rarely see impatience from Leighton Hewitt. We saw it there, Leaf. And I wonder if that statement you made earlier about his being a little toey, as they say in Australia. He's played a lot of tennis this week and uh, not used to being in a championship match. Big serve out wide, his first ace of the afternoon, 40 15. Well, that is very impressive. Played through the qualifying here, has not lost a set. Just one. And that includes a win over two time U.S. Open champion Patrick Rafter. So. 7661. That's a line shot up the line by Jan Michael Gamble. Good control on that two hander. You can see how he waited on that ball and it fell down into the hit zone. You can look at the preparation. Good shoulder turn. See that turn with the shoulder? And then he just drives right down the line. Again, Gamble on that short ball. He looks sharp so far, Lee. He looks very sharp, particularly on the balls in the middle of the court, those short balls. You can execute effectively from the middle of the court. Look at how he's in. He's really attacking. When that ball lands right in the corner. Beautifully done. Changing up the serve out wide.
Okay. There it is, one game all. Well, for those of you that don't know, know much about Leighton Hewitt, we asked him to tell us a little bit about himself. I'm Leighton Hewitt, and uh, I like to get pretty pumped up on the court. And I suppose my biggest technical part of my game is my ground strokes. And uh, I suppose being mentally tough out there, I sort of like being the centre of attention out on centre court as well. I'll tell you what, I think he's a Borg look-alike. I really do. I mean, if you've seen Bjorn Borg recently, he looks a lot like this kid. He's definitely got the long locks. Oh! Yeah. Hanging out behind. I tell you, he's one of the best movers on the tour. And that was what people were saying about Bjorn Borg. Well, I was impressed yesterday, Lee, with what Brad Gilbert had to say about Leighton Hewitt, that he is just so tenacious and he plays every point. If he's up five love and 40 love and misses a ball, he gets very unhappy. Yeah, so. he really is a perfectionist and he wants to win every single point. Nicely held by Gamble. It looked like he was going to go back to the backhand of Hewitt. And at the last second, he just snapped it through. Here's another look at it. Again, it looks like he's going to go back to the back. And the last second, he just throws the wrist through, hits the ball a little bit earlier. It goes cross court. You can't really see that when you're on the other end of the net. Jan Michael Gamble with one-handed forehands. If he's doing that, that means that Gamble isn't set. He's on the run, and that's where Hewitt feels he has the advantage. For those of you out there that have been to tennis clinics and you hear that age-old expression, get your racket back early. Gamble is a great example of somebody, Leaf, who really gets that racket back way early. Oh, a second down the center. That was a sweet little slice. Really hit the line and then bend it out to the left. Hewitt, no chance to get a racket on it. 113 miles per hour. Oh, Jan Michael Gamble. Double game point to go to a 2 1 lead here in the first set. Oh, a few errors thus far. He has been flawless. How much do you think that win over Sampras is going to help? Gamble's confidence out there today, Lee. Oh, I think it's going to help immensely. I mean, that's a scalp that makes you feel good about your game and the direction it's going in. Down the center, a solid serve. Jan Michael Gamble up 2 1 for set. Each set this year on Fox Sports Net will be selecting a Ginsana Extra Energy Point for outstanding effort and energy. I'll tell you if you want to see some effort and energy, it's out there today. Doubles match underway. Gimmelstab and Renneberg going against Palmer and Zamonich. Gimmelstab Renneberg won that match. They're in the finals. They'll take on Knowles and Stolly later today for the championship. Road to Hartford. Final playoff tournament for the doubles. Well, glad we got to see some doubles last night. Lee, there were some excellent points in that match. Jared Palmer and Ninet Zamonich taking on. Justin Gimmelstab and Richie Renneberg. So a lot of American players here certainly trying to get their games together on the eve of the Davis Cup in April, taking on Great Britain. So Tom Gullickson taking a look at all these results. And certainly looking at this man on the far side of the net, Jan Michael Gamble, there he is from Spokane, Washington. He has really moved up the ranks. Double break point. volley for Leighton Hewitt. Well, Hewitt is going to have to move forward when he gets Gamble off balance like he did here. When he sees that he's going to have to play a one-handed back and he's got to move forward and he does that well there. 
So he can't just stay back and rally. If he creates an opportunity, he's got to move forward and close the point out. So he has broken serve. He leads 3-1 in the first set. Well, we asked Jan Michael Gamble why he Gamble uses leads. two hands from both sides. Very unorthodox. It originated from just being not strong enough when I was little to hit the ball hard. I was really tall and skinny and just didn't have the, what it took to, to really put the, the punch in the ball. And that's the way I loved hitting. So um, we hit two-handed and, and uh, I generated a lot of pace that way. He has generated a lot of pace thus far in this match. Up 3-1 with a break. Serving to go up 4-1. Jan Michael probably doesn't need two hands now. If you're ever shaking hands with Jan Michael, he's one of these guys who's got just gigantic, enormous, strong hands. Very powerful young man. We will have tennis pro view from Quest Tech tracking the serves with us. First time outdoors. We saw some wonderful shots indoors in Los Santos in Memphis. Great serve down the center, ace number three for Jan Michael Gamble. He's very solid on that big serve down the middle. I like this guy's motion on the serve leaf. I think he's got one of the best easy motions. He was working on it hard yesterday after the match. It's good. Oh, Leighton Hewitt, a big opportunity, hits one of the best lobs we've seen all week long. And he blows the easy little two-hander. And there's Chuck Gamble, father and coach to Jan Michael. A very intense man who really agonizes through these matches, but so supportive of his son. Of course, his wife and Jan Michael's mom, Diane, is probably home in Washington, hopefully watching here on Fox Sports Net. Well, he didn't miss by much. And Gamble, he's just exuding confidence right now. Getting a lot of first serves in. And he's not making many errors, but he's playing aggressive tennis, and that's a deadly combination. And so now 4-1, Gamble, the Scottsdale Princess, an outdoor paradise with a playground, a one-mile jogging path, tennis courts, racquetball. Come see us. All to the forehand side. Leighton Hewitt down 1 4 in the first set, but up 15 love now on his own serve. Just long. Six games. His best of three for the title. Jan Michael Gamble off to a very solid start. And there's a look at Leighton Hewitt's coach, Darren Kale, also from South Australia and Adelaide, a former great player, two time winner on the ATP Tour. One of the great guys in tennis, great friends with John Fitzgerald and all the guys. It's good to see Darren staying yep. involved in the game. And I'll tell you, that's a reason why these young Australians do well is because of the influence of veteran players like this. Okay, Hill, a great serve and volley early. Boy, could he hit that approach backhand and come in behind it. <laughs> Jumping at that forehand, that's his favorite shot. As Brad Gilbert mentioned yesterday, the inside out forehand. That is a winning shot for Leighton Hewitt. Yeah, we 
said, we're going to bring you a little tennis pro view. Here is a look at the aces of Jan Michael Gamble and where they occurred, Lee. When you placed them beautifully, this one out wide. Of course, these three down the middle. Look at how close he got to the lines. You can really see the trajectory of those serves. He likes to hit that one flat down the middle, but he'll also slice it. We can also track the trajectory of the slice serve as well on the pro view. And there's Gamble. When he gets that first serve in, he's looking pretty good. Only 100%. <laughs> Fantastic record on that first serve. 4-2, one break. This is a part of the Jan Michael game that can really transform him from a top 40 player to a guy who's in the top 10. It's if he can come in and play volleys like this. Because he's certainly got the guns off the ground. And if he can add this kind of dexterity yep. at the net, boy, he'd be very tough to beat. I like that touch, Lee, but I haven't seen much of that from Jan Michael Gamble. He always, to me, looks a little uneasy up there. At that time, he looked very comfortable. Remember, he's only 21, so his game is just getting going. Boy, that's big. Right down the middle, 117 miles an hour. more comfortable he's coming in behind some of those first serves we are at the Franklin Templeton Tennis Classic in Scottsdale Arizona where Jan Michael Gamble leads 5-2 in the first set of this championship match stay with us Hewitt serving down to five in the first set. And Michael Gamble on the far side has the break. I think Hewitt's starting to get a feel now for the pace and the rhythm of Jan Michael Gamble. That was a much better point from the young South Australian. He was keeping the ball a little bit deeper. Talked about the altitude here, about 2,500 feet leaf, which is a big factor. And today, certainly some humidity in the air, maybe slowing things down a little bit. And a little closer look at these two competitors. Again, Hewitt just turning 18, ranked 91 in the world. But certainly moving up ATP. This is his third ATP Tour final. He's already run one. Gamble, of course, playing in his first final. Both of these guys looking like they're going to have good careers. So they should be around a while. And hopefully if they stay healthy, they can reach some levels that they want to be at. Ooh. They go long. Tia, I don't think Gamble liked the way he hit that high forehand yeah. volley leaf. He volleyed it right back to Hewitt, and that's always an uncomfortable feeling when you you, you think the guy's going to run to the open court and he just stands there. But Gamble looks good moving forward. He's played some good volleys. Wow, called a fault. Looked good. Like Hewitt thought he had the ace. There is Steve Ulrich in the chair. He will not be overruling. Okay, I'm not sure from here to change it. Look good from up here. That one looked pretty good to me yeah. too, Bear. Leighton Hewitt holds. It is now five games to three. First set. Jim Michael Gamble only losing three points in four service games. 16 out of 19 points. Two love games. Very impressive. Great play 
point from Leighton Hewitt. Here's Gamble serving for the first set, and Hewitt plays his best point of the set. And the first point of the game, Leaf, we've talked often about how important that is. Again, Hewitt with great focus and determination here. Finally, the unforced from Gamble. Love 15, just a glimmer of hope for Leighton Hewitt. Second serve. When you really start seeing how Hewitt is reminiscent of Michael Chang in the way he gets a lot of balls back and makes you win the point twice. It's just over the baseline. And there's a break for Gamble, but I think Gamble's tried to improve his second serve. He feels like I've got a big first serve. If I can make my second serve even stronger, I will be tough to break. And that was a good example of it there. over the baseline. Well, Hewitt starting to get some rhythm, as you mentioned, Lee. Hewitt, 18 years old, just 18, reminiscent of an Aussie I knew by the name of Ken Rosewall, who won the French Championships at age 17. What a player he was. Great ground strokes. And leave interesting thing about Rosewall, he started with great ground strokes, but became a superb volleyer after he turned professional. <laughs> Point and now double break point for Leighton Hewitt to get to 5 4. A good look at Hewitt. You can see him pumping his fist, saying, Come on. Again, one of the most enthusiastic, tenacious guys on the court. It's wide. First set, 18 year old from Adelaide back in this first set. Stay with us. We're on Fox Sports Net. Leighton Hewitt serves to get to five all when we return. Overhead today as Jan Michael Gamble up 5 4, but Leighton Hewitt on the far side out of Adelaide, Australia, trying to get to five all. We want to welcome all of our Aussie tennis fans down there on Fox Sports Australia joining us today for this telecast. Good day, mates. The Aussie flag flying high. A lot of Australian activity this week here. Patrick Grafter knocked off by this youngster. Darren Cahill, the coach from Australia. Mark Woodford out of Adelaide, another Aussie. Sort of felt like the uh, good old days here with all the Australians going for it. Fifteen all. over the baseline and we'll try to go for it all. Well, these are the moments that really test Jan Michael Gamble. He served for the first set at 5-3, lost his serve. He had a chance there on the backhand. I mean, this is when he has to say that he is the same player he was to get that lead. Is the tape and now Leighton Hewitt at 40 15. Trying to get to five games off. And there's Chuck, and you can see him agonizing with that. He'll age about 10 years this afternoon. Next time we see him, we will recognize him. Big 
big shot down the line. And Leighton Hewitt has done it. He holds serve. We are at five games off. First set. Look at the Australians in the top 100. Rafter, of course, at the top. Philippus, Stoltenberg, Andrew Illy, Draper. And, of course, Leighton Hewitt at 9-1. to He's going to be moving up this ladder very quickly. And you have to think that guys like John Newcomb and Tony Roach, who had the Australian Davis Cup committee, are saying, hey, this guy is a player, and I could use him on red clay or a slow hard court. Tony Roach is here, has been here all week long. I'm sure he's keeping a close eye on Leighton Hewitt. Reporting back to his old mate, John Newcomb, the Davis Cup captain back in Australia. Not a bad doubles team, Roach and Newcomb. On the French, Wimbledon and the Australian. Boy, you can see it fall, coming out of Jan Michael's grip a little bit here yep. now. Lost the first point on his serve. Short second serve. There's a better ball there from Gamble. Take a look at the American Sampras and Agassi at the top. And of course, Jan Michael at 45. He's going to move into the 30s. He will surpass Michael Chang with this result here. So again, Tom Gullickson has to be looking at Gamble saying, hey, this could be my man in April when we take on Great Britain for the Davis Cup match there. Good finish from Gamble there. His game really changes when he gets that first serve in. Tennis is a lot easier, Barry, when you get the first serve in. It seems like you have so many more opportunities. You know, you're not getting challenged so much off the return. Although Andre, Andre Agassi would disagree with that. Just wide. Well, we talked about racket preparation, a little clinic operation for those of you working on getting that racket back early. Watch it now as Jan Michael Gamble approaches the ball. Look at that racket come back. Rack He's is moving already his in feet. the back there. Absolutely. Way back in early preparation. That's what makes both sides of those two handers so very strong from Gamble. I'm waiting for my leaf tip of the day, too. I know you'll probably have one before the show is over. I'm going to recommend not playing with two hands. It's very complicated. <laughs> I mean, Jan Michael has to change grips. It's a real dramatic shift. His ability to do that says something about what good hands he has. 40-30. Five games all. First set. Gamble with a chance to go up 6-5. Of course, there are two other players on the tour who play with two hands off both sides. Byron Black from Zimbabwe. Fabrice no. Santoro. France also plays with two hands on both sides, and all of them supremely talented players. Oh, Wilbur hits it. And so Jan Michael Campbell has held. He leads 6-5. We're at the Franklin Templeton Tennis Classic. When we return, the 18-year-old from Adelaide, pumped up, tries to get into a tiebreak. Leighton Hewitt serving now, down 5-6, trying to get into a tiebreak here in the first set of this championship match. Looks good. Very cautious, Leaf. He's had a couple of opportunities to come in. Elected to stay back. And it works. Great work from Gamble. He stayed with that. He really got a couple of balls back that I didn't think he would. That's what makes this young Australian so tough. Just makes you play one more ball. Love 15. Big points now for both players here. Late in the first set. Has had experience winning tournaments, winning in Adelaide back in January of 1998. Oh, way too good. Best return of the day from Gamble. Absolutely, and he was in on top of the baseline, and he didn't take a big swing, but he hit the ball so clean and so firm. Watch the preparation. Again, short swing, nice and compact, and he just hits it, but doesn't overhit it. The 
favorite shot from Leighton Hewitt runs around the forehand into the backhand corner. It's the few times when he hits that shot leaf that he does elect to come in and volley because he's got such confidence in that approach shot. Goes long, and so from Love 30 down, Leighton Hewitt draws even at 30 all. Hewitt, a bad toss. You could hear him from up here. Sorry, mate. I'll start again. Serves his first double of this match, and what a time for it. Puts him down set point. Strange. Really surprised to see him go for that second serve. Oh, <laughs> that ball could have dribbled over. Almost went over. And we saw that happen in Memphis with Todd Martin on match point against Jan Michael Gamble. The ball went over. Martin closed out the match. And Gamble got a, a break like that against Sampras earlier this week. Now that is a good serve, and that's where the wide serve is so effective, particularly against someone who has two hands stretching out wide. But again, nice preparation. Boom, you can see how he brushes over the ball. Gets that top spin to make sure that ball's going over the net, yet inside the baseline. Dan Cahill looks on. We will have a tiebreaker to determine the first set. Their tiebreak records in '99. It was looking pretty clutch there, didn't it? Wow. That might, that might say something to you that hey. If you're going to play tie breaks, you play a consistent, steady game like Hewitt, and you can prevail. And that's a nice way to start from Gamble. Ace number six. Gamble has to be aggressive with his serve. And he's got to get a high foot percentage of first serves in. But he didn't. Well, Gamble really hits the ball beautifully cross court and down the line. But that cross court shot, if you can carry that opponent out into the alley where Hewitt was, you're in a tough position. So Hewitt with the first serve, but Gamble has the mini break. So I'm sure, like a good quarterback on a football team, he's taking his time, setting in his play in his mind what he wants to do with his first serve. Don't step up to the line unless you know what you're going to do. Serve. I mean, that ball really bounded off the court. Gamble showing what great strength he has in his wrist and his arm. Good change of pace, leave only 84 miles per hour, but a lot of spin.
just too good. But Leighton Hewitt charged up again, hits a brilliant shot deep to the backhand, and then finishes it off with a forehand. That's an amazing turnaround by Hewitt. I mean, this looked like a point that Gamble was controlling. Then Hewitt just jumped all over that forehand. Mm. Closed it out there. Best point of the match right there. Tremendous shot from Leighton Hewitt, and now... He is not short on intensity. He very really is. <laughs> he is fun to watch. Oh, the miss, Eddie. Went for it all. Went for it all, and now four games, four points to two in the tiebreak. We're at the Franklin Templeton Tennis Classic, Scottsdale Princess Resort in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm Barry McKay, along with Lee Showers, bringing you championship action here. The American, Chan Michael Gamble, going against this youngster from Adelaide, Australia, Leighton Hewitt. Hewitt down 2-4 in a first set tiebreak. Jan Michael Gamble. You don't see Hewitt coming forward that often. He played a pretty good volley, but not good enough. And I think he may have scraped his knee, so he's just taking a little bit of a moment here to address that. Again, when he got down for the volley, that's when he scraped his knee. Here's the approach. Now, this volley, just not enough angle. Gamble has some time and some room down the line. Let's take another look, and we can see. Look at him get down on that. Great way to bend your knees and get down to the volley. I think he's one of these guys kind of like Tim Wilkerson from the old day, you know? When he gets a little blood on him, he's probably going to be tougher than ever. So Jan Michael Gamble now one step closer. Seventh ace of the day for Gamble as his dad looks on. Little blood coming out of that right knee. He scraped it. Ouch. Gamble with the first set in a tiebreak. We're at the Canadian Pacific Scottsdale Princess Resort, where all 650 rooms have a balcony overlooking scenes like this and a championship golf course, the TPC, where they play the Phoenix Open every year. Stay with us. We'll be right back. 7 6, the first set in a tiebreak from the Franklin Templeton Tennis Classic. Leighton Hewitt getting a little help from Doug Spreen there on the changeover. Leighton very busy this week and throughout the year on our Fox telecast we will name the ATP Tour Sportsman of the Week. Here is Leighton Hewitt. This week's NJTL Sportsman goes to Leighton who took part in Thursday's ATP Tour Kids Day. Leighton got to hit with kids on the mini tennis court set up by Cartoon Network. Smash Tennis's Fred Flintstone and Scooby-Doo also came out to take part in the fun. A $5,000 donation will be made to the USTA NJTL in Leighton's name. Now, Leighton got along great with the kids. I'll tell you, he's not much older than I mean, he's pretty much a kid still himself. How Scooby-Doo's back in? <laughs> yeah, I think he's got left. a pretty good slice. Two minutes rough. left. He doesn't move around the court as well two as he Two minutes should. remaining. We want to thank the ATP Tour communications expert Greg Sharka who has been with us a lot over the last four weeks and has done a terrific job keeping us up to speed on all the ATP tour happenings while we got a little time let's go to a Leaf Shires tennis tip Leafs tips is brought to you by Mercedes Benz if you're going to serve in volley you better know what a split step is it's not a dance step it's a split step what it does, it allows you to make your movement forward into the net behind the serve. It allows you to stop or check your movement so you can anticipate the return and explode to your next shot. One of the great players who does this is Pete Sampras. He uses his big serve, comes forward, uses that split step before exploding out off the return and making the volley. If you're going to be a good serve and volleyer, you need to have a good split step so you can play that first volley and move forward after that. And that is your Fox Tennis tip for the day. 
All right, I like it. Leaf, a split step. Huh? It's not a dance step. I thought it was for a moment there. It's not like the Foxtrot. Well, I'm not sure Hewitt or Gamble know what a split step is. These guys don't really serve in volley <laughs> no. a lot, but I think that Jam Michael Gamble is feeling good about moving forward. This has now turned into a three minute injury timeout for Leighton Hewitt as Doug Spreen has taken a bit more time and 30 seconds. working on 30 that seconds. scraped right knee. 30 um, seconds um, remaining. Late, and then I'll Leighton call Hewitt. And, then you and you know, seconds. it's interesting because Gamble was just sitting there and now he jumps up trying to stay warm. It's really tough for the other player, isn't it, Leaf, with an injury timeout? It is. And I'll tell you, Gamble's been there before. What with Andre Agassi getting injured, Doug Spreen was out there addressing Agassi. So I think if you're playing Jan Michael, you better make an appointment with Doug Spreen. Let's have a look now at our first set statistics. Again, both these guys playing well. Looks like Gamble is dictating play. He's trying to create. He's making a few on fours. But both these guys playing pretty balanced tennis. There wasn't much difference between the two of them. I think Gamble, though, hit more winners on the right points. And that was the difference. We're at the Franklin Templeton Tennis Classic, Scottsdale, Arizona, the Canadian Pacific Scottsdale Princess Resort. I'm Barry McKay along with Leif Shires bringing you championship action. Jan Michael Gamble on the far side has won the first set 7-6 against Leighton Hewitt. This is the first game of the second set. And that was the best volley Jan Michael Gamble has hit all day. He was really tested. He came up with a nice stretch backhand volley. He's going to hit the approach down the line here. Look at this stretch volley. Beautifully done by Gamble. Nicely done. Look at overhead from Hewitt. You see that right knee now bandaged. And here's that approach shot. And as he comes in, he's going to use a little bit of a hop step. See, there's your split step. And also recover and play the overhead off that split step, too. It gives you time to see what your opponent's going to do, and then you can explode to the next shot. Hit. Oop, that one got away from Gamble. Tried to change the pace with the looping top spin shot and it got away from him. Remember the old game of hopscotch? You used to play in the backyard with a little chalk. If you played that game well, you became a great split step person. Really? Is that right? Absolutely. See, the Hewitt really makes Gamble work for every point. Forty fifteen, first game, second set. Gamble with the first seven six. down the line that was a tough ball too I think the low balls are the toughest for Jan Michael remember he's six feet three inches so he's really got to get down to that ball and that shot down the line of course going over the higher part of the net so he really had to cut it close in this first game. 40-15 lead disappears and now things get very tight. Again, look at where Gamble is when he plays aggressively. He's right inside the baseline. That's like Andre Agassi. He is all over you. And that second service return really got him going in that play. It's jammed with that first serve.
we made it to the grill, as you can see in Leaf. That looks delicious. This is the dry aged porterhouse, and it is perfect. I'm even having a burger here. Everything's great at the Scottsdale Princess Grill. You're telling me, and how could I have a burger at a five diamond restaurant? That porterhouse looks awful good. It's that Ohio upbringing. You're just a Midwestern <laughs> guy. <laughs> Championship action here. As Jan Michael Gamble serving in the second game. Second set. Here is a look at the Questec tennis pro view of the aces in the tie break from Gamble. Boy, and those balls really zip down the middle, 118 miles an hour on the forehand. 107 on the backhand, beautifully placed. Just wide. It's a good game from Gamble. You know, he had some chances there in the opening game on Hewitt's serve, and now he's back here with his serve, but he's playing aggressive. He's taking the attack forward. This is what he should do more of. It's been effective so far today. It's a big backhand right down the line. And a quick one off. Let's have a look at our Ginsana extra energy point of the first set. Hewitt in the backcourt, and there it was, a tremendous shot from Leighton Hewitt. That's our Ginsana extra energy point of the first set. And this that point really was, of course, ball. the point to break back. Gamble serving for the first set at 5-3. So Hewitt showing some extra energy to get back in that first set. His forehand very deceptively. If I would have sworn he was going to go out to the backhand side that time. Yeah, well, it all happens at the last second. You know, he's prepared, the ball's bouncing, and he's just waiting to see if Gamble's going to move. And he didn't see Gamble move out of the backhand. He nailed it down the line. Oh my God. Gamble keeping the pressure on coming in. So, Jim Michael Gamble now early in this second set with him. Bit of an opportunity, 15-30. No, he jumps on it a little quick. And so now double break point. Jim Michael Gamble. I think that's where Hewitt's going to learn to be more efficient is when he is in command of the point. He likes to play a little more defensively. At that point, he should have closed out. He had the backhand. That's it. A little wide. That was impressive to me, too, Leaf. There's a big turnout here. This place seats 6,000, and Sampras, Agassi, and Rafter all out of this tournament. But look at this turnout for the finals. Tremendous support for a big league event here at the Scottsdale Princess. It's going to go wide. Now from 1540 down, we are at deuce. Well, good time for Hewitt to get the first serve in. that forehand. Again, he has got some open court here. And that is a made-to-order volley. And he just hits the tape with it. Clearly disappointed in mm. that shot. There, but he couldn't quite pull the trigger on it. That was a big sigh from Jan Michael Gamel. I think he knew that he had a little bit of a chance there, but he couldn't get it.
baseline. And so now Leighton Hewitt with a chance to hold and get to 2 1. Australia holds in the third game of the second set. Two one two. The NBL. And Michael Gamble with the first set, seven six in a tiebreak, and now on serve, one two down. He holds up new balls are changing at seven and nine. Michael Gamble with a tremendous week here with wins over Pete Sampras in the round of 16 and then a tough win over Andre Agassi which he didn't want to have happen with the retirement last night but it goes as a win. Speaking of wins and guys who have knocked off both Agassi and Sampras leaf there's a, a very unique list. Well Gamble the highest ranked player to beat those two guys in the same event Karecha in Hanover last year Krychek. But only six guys have done it, and I tell you, that's a that's a good week. I should say the lowest ranked player at 45. There's the shot. That's a big shot right on the sideline from Gamble. Gamble for court again a good approach he's going to try and go cross court not good enough Gamble nails it and watch him lay the wrist back opens the racket face and plays with that bottom edge beautifully done you know what else he's improvised well in the volleys today Lee he's been caught a couple times on that last one Wayne Gamble has played well today Go look at those winners. 23. 10 out of 12 winners for Gamble when he comes to net. That's 83 percent. You at only six out of 10. Big difference. for Leighton Hewitt. I mean, he was so determined not to make any mistakes. He had to keep the ball deep and wait out Jan Michael Gamble, who finally gave him the unforced. Way over the baseline. serve for Gamble. Well, it has been a great week for the Australians here in Scottsdale, Arizona. A look at the Aussies this week. Boy, Leighton Hewitt doing well, of course. Stoltenberg in the finals against Agassi Philippousis, where he served that gigantic serve over 140 miles an hour. 95 Philippousis in the finals. So the Aussies have played well down here. I'll never forget that day, Leave. We were here when Philippousis nailed that serve 142 miles per hour and a roar went up from the audience. That was tremendous. I think in this altitude and in this dry air of the desert, good opportunity for the big servers. Absolutely. And I think Ruzetsky did it in Indian Wells where he got up to 149. 
This is just unheard of. 149, wow. That is good tennis from Jan Michael Gamble. Again, dominating the points from the back. He came in on a good shot, and he finished the volley. Watch this shot. This approach shot right here. He takes it early. He's right on the baseline. And in reply, he gets a nice ball that he can volley. He's feeling much more confident at net leaf, and he has to play himself into points like that. Win him. And then his confidence will come as he becomes a better volleyer. I tell you, the guy is so strong. His hands. He's one of the strongest guys on the tour. That's too good. Here's Hewitt. Look at the preparation. The racket is back. He really takes a big wind-up on the forehand, but his timing is good on it. We've only seen him miss a couple. Watching little Michael Chang over the last year or so on that forehead kind of throws himself at that ball. He really does. Oh, that is too good. You can hear Leighton Hewitt just sell it. Yep. He knew he was beat. Tremendous return from Jan Michael Gamble. Well, this is a page out of Andre Agassi's book. Watch how he stays down on the ball. His feet are set. He's not up in the air. Again, you just use your weight transfer at the top of your body, that turning, torquing motion with your body and your arms throwing through the hip. That was a sweet return. There weren't guys hitting with two hands like that when you were playing oh, there, were they? Just catches the tape. Well, the one guy that comes to mind is the great Pancho Segura. Maybe one of the best two-handers off the forehand side leap. Took it early. Could he flatten it, it out, or was he more oh, yeah. spinning? Hit right through it. Hit right through it. And here's the two-hander that just clips the tape. Again, that time he got his weight up on the ball. I mean, that's a shot you've got to stay down on it to get it over the... Just determined to hit one more ball back in the court. this youngster. Very reminiscent of Michael Chang, who always makes him hit one more shot. Again, look at this scrappy play. change again a little bit of defense watch how quickly he goes to offense scoots around the backhand and just rifles it back cross court Let's see if gamble takes a chance here on this second serve catches the tape and Leighton Hewitt does it the determination of the 18 year old from Adelaide stays with us 3-2 Hewitt Second set. It is a great spot, and we want to thank Sue Cavanaugh, the new public relations director here at the resort, who has really hosted us so well during our stay. The Canadian Pacific Scottsdale Resort. What a beautiful spot, Leaf. It is sensational. Oh, 
Still a chance now for Hewitt. His first left 30. Catch, yeah. Bad time for it. Puts him down left 30. And now Hewitt sensing an opportunity here. 3 2. Flexibility from Jan Michael Gamble. Toughest shot in the business at high backhand overhead. Well, I talked to you about how strong Jan Michael Gamble was. This shot really shows just how strong he is. Again, some good work at the net. Now watch him just flick the wrist at the last second, and he gets the ball through the court. And again, Gamble looking good at net leaf when it counts. I tell you, last year when he played Andre Agassi here and lost, he was just not able to capitalize on points at the net. And he really looks like a different player here this year. Watch him come forward. This is a tough volley. He's got to stretch and get that racket face open. Nicely done. It's wide. Well, and Jan Michael Gamble, so efficient when he's forward. Very intense. Leighton Hewitt is just not happy with that call on the baseline. Steve Ulrich under the gun here. But look at how Hewitt gets himself composed again. He goes back to the racket strings. And that's how he checks back in, saying, I'm ready to go now. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's playing this match right along with his son. Talk about agonizing over there on the <laughs> sidelines. He is out like playing every point. Well, that was a big point because it would have taken him to three all instead. Very tight here at Deuce. Well, he's put himself into some trouble there with that double fault. Well, what a great chance now for Leighton Hewitt. 18-year-old Australian from Adelaide. Can he get a break here in the second? Oh! Second serve opportunity for Hewitt to go up 4-2. Break point. Oh, oh, that was a good shot. sweet ball down the line. The executive producers of Fox Sports Net are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. The coordinating producer for Fox Sports Net is Larry Myers. Today's final produced by Harold Hecht and directed by Bruce Troy. Point up such a point. we've seen all afternoon Lee. talk about using the whole court again Jan Michael Gamble really yeah, tested by Gamble. Hewitt who just makes you get one more ball back again a great backhand overhead there just to keep the ball in play Hewitt really running and Gamble trying to close out here but one more time Hewitt tests him incredible re retrieving great this guy Hewitt is putting on some miles today Barry in there. We 
are back to Deuce. Well, if Leighton Hewitt's coach Darren Cahill said that Hewitt was feeling a little toey, a little tired or fatigued, he's not looking like he's toey. No. He's doing a lot of running around, and there's Darren Cahill. I'm sure there's a little nervous energy going on in there as well. miles per hour right down the center when he needs it. And Barry McKay along with Leif Shire is bringing you the championship match from the Scottsdale Princess Resort in Scottsdale, Arizona. The Franklin Templeton Classic as Jan Michael Gamble now serving to try and get to three all in the second set. He won the first in a tie break 7-6. And again, Hewitt with that beautiful inside out forehand, so deceptive. When you really felt like Gamble was going to get a ball over to his forehand, watch how he starts sneaking over right here. He's thinking this one has got to go over here, but no. Matthew pointing to a spot where he got that ball hit wide. Eighth ace of the day. Let's have a look at our quest deck. Tennis Pro View where that ball hit. Again, the ball lands closer to the net almost than it does the service line, so that really shows that Gamble's getting a lot of angle out. I mean, the ball hits the sideline and it's pretty much heading yep. straight into the crowd. That is a great view because so many times there's big questions on whether those balls are a ball. Well, that's why. Gamble getting a little impatient. You know, and as you watch a tennis match, I, I feel strongly that most of the errors players make is because your feet are not in position. And that one there was a real case of Jan Michael Gamble not getting his feet ready and the ball a little too close to him. When well, there's a good example there, 30 unforced. Oh. 14 of those errors off the forehand alone. Oh. to go up down the line again look at where he's standing he's well inside the baseline again if the ball's floating move to it quickly don't let it drop Campbell does that nicely there longest game of the match 10 minutes elapsed since this game started we are at deuce number six once again Lane Hewitt with an opportunity break point after playing such a great point, you really have to refocus Gamble with an easy error on the next. What? <laughs> great idea as he throws up the topspin lob, but just a little short. I tell you, Gamble took a chance. Watch, he plays a ball in midair. The swinging volley. And I, tell you, I think if he'd moved in sooner on the point, he could have played a more traditional, conventional volley. <laughs> right, a good time for that ace out wide. Ninth ace of the match for Gamble. 
Again, take a look where this serve is landing when it goes out wide. There's our wow. Quest Tech view of it. Boy, that's great. No question about that one. Clean ace, thanks to Quest Tech. It was only 95 miles an hour, so that says that there was a lot of spin on it. It hit very flat. And there it is. Chen Michael Gamble, a very tough game as his dad looks on. And we're at three all in the second set. Well, if you like what you've seen in the first four weeks of this year, stay with us. We're going to be down at the Atlanta AT&T Challenge in early May, then on to the Miller Lite Hall of Fame. Rhode Island Leaf, that'll be a beauty in early July. Mercedes Cup in LA, Lake Mason in Washington, and the Hamlet Cup right before the US Open. Fantastic tennis on the ATP Tour on Fox Sports Net all year long. I think all of us are looking particularly to the event in July in Newport, Rhode Island. John McEnroe and Ken McGregor inducted into the Hall of Fame, and should be some great moments. Last year, Jimmy Connors inducted. It was a fun weekend, wasn't it? This year, the great left-hander, John McEnroe, who many claim, arguably, that he is one of the greatest ever. Barry, who's the greatest player of all time? Wow, good question. You know, my era, unfortunately, I, I still think uh, the great coach of Gonzalez was awful tough to beat. And on a given day, I like Lou Ho. But you know, McEnroe, on his day, maybe one of the most fun players to watch play this game. Yeah, I, I think on his day, McEnroe was was the best. I mean, I, I thought Sampras was for a while. I'm, I'm having trouble about who's better, McEnroe or Sampras. Yeah, it's nice to hear it there. It was just such a nice point when you can get an ace. It's such an easy way to do it, but you can never count on him. Now to 40-15, he could use a quick game on his own serve after that marathon last game. Again, looking good. Look at Gamble there. Again, he's rechecking in. He's trying to forget about that error. Look to the next point. Everyone's going to make a few errors on a tennis court. It's the player who forgets about him and uses them in the right way that can get through it. That's good. Though. Volley finally goes out, and Leighton Hewitt has held. He leads 4-3 in the second set. This weekend on Fox Sports, join our Aussie cricketers as they travel to Sabina Park, Jamaica, for the second test. Ball-by-ball -ball coverage of Australia's tour of the West Indies, exclusively live. Then we're off to the States for all the slam-dunking fury of the NCAA Championships, live and exclusive. And the US PGA Tour continues as golf's big gun shoot it out at the Honda Classic. Fox Sports, championship moments into the next millennium. Welcome back. This is an impossible situation for the Spurs. Absolutely no time left on the clock. But wait a minute, what's going on? Is that Phil Mickelson? It makes perfect sense to me, Tom. He's the king of the lob wedge. This is his shot. But it's a very tight line, even for Phil. It's up. Well, full court pass. Looks like an alley to Robinson. What a perfect time! Boy, these guys are good. Franklin Templeton Tennis Classic Championship action here as Jan Michael Gamble with the first set in a tie break. We are on serve in the second. Gamble down 3-4. This is best of three for the title. We've got a match on our hands, Leaf. I think this is, could go to another tiebreak this set. Well, it's double fall. Clearly wide. I gotta go with him though. Jan Michael Gamble with a bad double fall to start off a game. He steadily improved his ranking. You see, he started out at 1,000. Right here in 95, he was playing at the finals of Kalamazoo, Michigan in the boys' 18s, and that's when he started accepting wild cards back in 95. So he's been on an elevator going up the rankings, and it will continue this week. He'll move into the 30s. 
from the 45 range that he's in now. So some good movement from Jan Michael Gamble in the rankings. Big serve down the center, 119 miles per hour. Gamble, although he has served a lot of aces, he's also served a lot of balls that have not come back. Lee. Close aces. As a server, if it doesn't come back, it's just as good as an ace. That was a nice serve. You can see how it was really moving away from Hewitt when it hit the court. enough time to see that angle and then find it and execute it. Again, he's going to try and put this one over wide into this area there, and that just works beautifully. See, Gamble didn't even run for it. That's as good as a 100 mile an yeah. hour down the line shot. Yeah. Well, a few drops of rain hitting this center court here at the Scottsdale Princess. See a few people bundling up. We have a huge downpour of about 45 minutes before this match started, and the grounds crew out here did a magnificent job getting it dry. Big forehand, and <laughs> Glenn Hewitt tries to get this American crowd charged up. That's a little tough to do. Well, he's shown some great energy and some great excitement. I think the crowd appreciates it. And that forehand brings him back to Deuce. <laughs> this is great. Looked like a tight end at an 80,000 football game. Get that crowd involved. Wide. Big points now. 3 4. Again, that's the red zone. Darren Kale, late in his coach, said you have to keep Gamble out of the red zone, which is sort of in the middle of the court. Otherwise, you're going to be seeing shots like this. Wow. Can he rip that two handed forehand? Prize money. Boy, this six. Yeah, some good dough up front. I'll tell you what's even more important are those ATP points because those ensure position on the ranking computer. So that 150 plus bonus points can really move these guys up the ladder. Big swinging forehand of Leighton Hewitt puts him down, Love 15. Just a bit of moisture now in the air as this crowd bundling up. Chilly day here in the desert. She's got the right idea. <laughs> that umbrella out there. Love 30 has and some good work from Gamble. He likes to flatten out the ball and go down the line with it. Boy, that's a nicely measured ball from Hewitt. And he didn't overhit it. He just played it very deep in the court. Like real deep, Leaf. This ball about six inches from both lines in that corner. Look at that. 
perfectly placed. Mm. down Leighton Hewitt stays alive here 30 all boy that looked like a good chance for gamble yep. he got the short ball just didn't execute Almost had no pace on it at all. Leaving. Sometimes those balls are harder to connect with than a fastball. Ball. Second serve. Championship action from the Franklin Templeton Tennis Classic here at the Scottsdale Princess in Scottsdale, Arizona. This youngster and this youngster from the United States, Jen Michael Gamble, serving now down 4 5 to Leighton Hewitt on the far side. Gamble has the first set in a tie break 7 6, 4 5, first point, 10th game, second set. Just gone over. Oh. A nice snag from Hewitt off the scoreboard. Second serve dishes up his fourth double of the afternoon. Looks like the rain, at least temporarily, has stayed away from this center court. The umbrella's folded up now. This court could be very dangerous if it just gets a few drops of rain. Buggy whip side spin off the forehand. The Aussie that used to hit that shot so well, John Newcomb. Boy, he could hit that well. Again, there's a two-hander. He stayed down on it. Pretty unorthodox watching a guy use two hands on the forehand side. Open court. There goes the volley long. And now 30 all. Well, this volley didn't have enough on it. Again, right back down the middle. Hewitt could line that one up. Oh, Cross-court forehand volley into the bottom of the net, and now set point. The young Australian to get even at a set apiece. A little bit of indecision here. He really felt he should have gone down the line. Instead, he tried to go back cross court. Look at the intensity. The 18 year old, great competitor. Second serve. It's good. We are dead even after one hour and 41 minutes. Well, Hewitt just played better on the big points and gambled too many errors when it really counted. 
I tell you, Hewitt is building momentum here. Really playing some good tennis. Ladies and gentlemen, just a little bit of rain makes the wow. court very Suddenly dangerous, now. slippery, especially the lines. We're going to stop until the rain stops. Thank Steve you. Steve Ulrich telling this crowd that they will stop momentarily until the rain stops. The, obviously, the court slick as the There's umbrellas have come out here at the end of two sets. And so, yeah, you can see it. It is definitely coming down now. Stay with us. We're on Fox Sports Net bringing you the championship match as Leighton Hewitt runs off this court. One set apiece from Scottsdale. Welcome back to center court, the Franklin Templeton Tennis Classic Championship match as Leighton Hewitt, the 18 year old from Adelaide, picks up a couple of extra rackets as he gets out there. And now Jan Michael Gamble going over to get ready for this final set and leaf you know psychologically well, they've played two sets them. this is a best of three championship match but basically they're coming out here to play one set for this championship yeah it definitely changes the complexion and the makeup of the match right now they have to prepare and they have to come out and play well early certainly when you play at Wimbledon in some places where there is a lot of rain I remember playing Kevin Kern once we had three or four rain delays in one yep. match so this is unusual though in the desert but certainly these guys have to come out and create something special early well, you can see some overcast skies here over this center court. A very, very dicey day here in the desert. Temperatures in the mid 60s. Look at some of the percentages as we look at the unforced errors. 40 unforced errors leave from Jan Michael Gamble. And 35 winners. He's really been trying to dictate play. Hewitt playing more consistently. Only 21 unforced, 14 winners. Both serving pretty well, but Gamble really effective when he gets that first serve in. It's been an interesting matchup. Gamble, the guy who's taking the risk, taking the chances. Hewitt, the one playing more steady, playing a little bit like a Michael Chang, getting a lot of balls back in play. A big hand for both players now as we prepare for this final set of the championship. Leighton Hewitt from the far court serving to Jan Michael Gamble. First game, final set. all over the very first point knocks off the two handed return for a winner love 15. passing shot just hit the tape and went wide so Gamble's aggressive play pays off he's at 15:30 now on Hewitt's serve again this is a key game the first game of the final set Gamble I'm sure is thinking if I can get a break here I can be in the driver's seat out there expecting the Southampton West Ham United soccer matchup will be joining that coverage following the tennis today on Fox Sports Net 30 on the first game too much with it he just took it flat and he hit it about three quarter pace 75% and oftentimes that's good enough again there's a nice return creates a little space and there he finds the opening so a big opportunity here first game final set break point second serve So Jan Michael Gamble has broken serve in the First opening game, game of second. the final set. One love, Gamble. Center court.
forward the Franklin Templeton Tennis Classic Championship action. The skies are starting to clear up as Jan Michael Gamble changes over, leading one love in the final set. Our video problems now cleared up as we bring you final set for this championship. What a day it has been. A little chilly out here in the desert today, but both these players handling the weather very well. So Gamble now with the break serving at one love. Twenty-two miles per hour, but a fault. But he is starting to open up on that first serve lead. Oh. That's long. This reminds me a little bit of how Jan Michael Gamble started off this match. He really got off to a good start right at the beginning, and that's when Hewitt started getting better and better and played himself into the match. So I think if there was a player who got an advantage from the rain break, it's been Gamble. Southampton against West Ham United English Premier Soccer League will be joining that following the tennis. Stay with us on Fox Sports. Next, we have not forgotten the soccer coverage today, folks. We'll be joining that immediately following the tennis. Southampton in that game. What do you think? Of I'm going to have to go with West Ham. <laughs> I knew you would. West Ham. I knew you would. A nice return from Hewitt. 18 year old out of South Australia, Adelaide, coached by Darren Cahill, also from Adelaide. Darren Cahill played the tour when I played, U.S. Open semi finalist. And Many people saying that Leighton Hewitt might be the next Australian to be a part of the later rounds of some big events. It's a solid overhead. Leighton Hewitt has yet to miss an overhead today, though. It's very solid up there. Oh, he is pretty nice with the overhead. He's not a big guy, only 5'11. Boy, with Australia already having Patrick Rafter, Mark Philippoussis. Adding young Leighton Hewitt, they mix a pretty complete group of guys. The Woodies in the double still, a very formidable team. And there is a solid looking backhand volley as Jan Michael Gamble holds to go up two low. He has a nice change from Gamble. We haven't seen him serve in volley. There's his father, Chuck, agonizing through this match along with his son. Gamble really let that second set slip away. The unforced errors really piled up on him. It looks like he's collected himself, and now he's got a bit of an edge here in the third set. Hewitt, needless to say, needs to hold his serve. Ball. Campbell dodging out of the way of that ball. Had it struck him, would have been in trouble. He would have lost the point. First bit of impatience from Gamble in this set. Saw the short ball, went for the winner. a lot of balls back and that was a great exchange both guys hitting the ball very deep neither of them really with any opportunity to get in but Leighton Hewitt took that ball a little bit earlier yeah, just missing yeah. well, 
that is starting to become Leighton Hewitt's trademark shot. That short forehand, he takes a big wind up, and really slaps it into the corner. We're really? going to see a lot of that, yeah. Barry, over the next few years. This oh. young man is playing some big time tennis. Oh. Just long. He would thought he had the, the game. Oh, there it is. Leighton Hood holds at love. Jan Michael Gamble leading 2 1 with a break. We're at the Franklin Templeton Tennis Classic Championship action on Fox Sports Net. Two games to one. Gamble leading now with a break in the final set. He has served nine aces thus far, Leaf, and I would say. Just long. He's got to think to himself, just keep serving well, and you can win this match. And he doesn't have to serve aces like that point. If you can get the short reply, he can really tee off with those two hands and win the point that way, too. So his serve brings him a lot of points other than just aces, too. That's the point that you have to wonder, how did he miss that shot? You know, and I think, again, it was footwork. He was really ahead of himself. I mean, you really got to set yourself. And Barry, sometimes the easier ball is a tougher ball to play because you're thinking, oh, I can just hit it, yeah. when in fact you got to move your feet and you got to prepare as much as you do if you're really tested by a fast shot. Wow, that's a good shot. Way deep in the corner. A little better preparation there. You could hear those little steps that Gamble takes. Those micro adjustments before you hit the ball. Watch him now. Watch his feet. You can see how many little steps he takes there just to position himself perfectly. And sometimes when you miss those steps, that's when you can make the unforced error. Yeah. 10 miles per hour. A little change up up the center. And so now 40-15 for Gamble. the sideline ace number 10 so Jan Michael Gamble now holds serve he leads 3-1 final set well, that's a nice finish there with that beautiful slice wide the closer you can make the ball land to the net the more angle you can create out and he really did that nicely there talked about it often Lee but that is the serve that Arthur Ashe used so well in that Wimbledon final against Jimmy Connors to win it that year in 75 Nice serve out wide. Deuce court. And what made Ash so tough is he could throw the big one down the middle. You exactly. know, that would really come through fast. So you had to lean a little middle, and then he'd throw that one out wide. Yeah, he had a big first serve, Arthur, when he hit it flat, flattened it out. off that backhand side. point here. Look at this volley. And this one he cuts it just a little too close. <laughs> He's got his father talking to himself. That's Chuck Gamble. He's looking more and more disheveled <laughs> as this match goes on. Oh brother what a tough job. Oh, wide. And there it is Leighton Hewitt. Holds. We are at three games to two in the final set. Friday, the Super 12 kick. No call 
ball is it is wide very tight call on that sideline leaf and now suddenly getting a little tight for gamble looked like he had things under control with the break he still has the break but down now love 30. Well, Hewitt is just doing a lot of good retrieving. You really feel like Gamble, geez, come in forward and cut off some of those floating balls instead of having to hit another great ground stroke. Gamble <laughs> thought he had the put away. Oh, and I think we got an overrule from Steve Ulrich. I think that ball was clearly good. And Ulrich has overruled it, and I think it's a good overrule, too. Again, Hewitt forcing yeah. another shot. Look at how doggedly determined he is to make him play another shot. Well, he was obviously playing the ball for sure. 1530. This match, two hours and five minutes old. And then he needed that first serve to get back even at 30 all. And this is a time when Gamble should take a little bit of a rest. Don't play quite so quickly. Get that first serve in. He likes to play very fast. tough moments 122 miles per hour when he needs it but a very nervous point at deuce and his big first serve saves him Hewitt is just such a great competitor. I mean, he's not really known as a volleyer, but he says, I got to take this forward. I mean, this volley, Hew Gamble has another swing at it. But Hewitt has now another break point. And there it is, the break. And Leighton Hewitt has broken back in this final set. We are at three games on. I'm Barry McKay along with Lee Shiris bringing you the championship match from the Franklin Templeton Tennis Classic. Scottsdale Princess Resort in Scottsdale, Arizona. And Gamble has won the first set, 7-6 in a tiebreak. Hewitt came back to win the second, 6-4. We are dead even in the final set. This is Leighton Hewitt serving in the seventh game. It's 3-all. point of his service game gamble looked like he really didn't play the ball but what happened was he popped a string on the serve so he immediately lost his tension and I think he just felt defeated when that happened nearly threw in the towel and here is Leighton Hewitt now coming on with lots of momentum and lots of energy well, what a turnaround one-handed backhand right there and that little oh. angle created some open space which Ooh. Campbell could not capitalize on he would play in some great defense and a love game for Leighton Hewitt who is really pumped now four games to three Hewitt leading in the final set stay with us we got a match on our hands here at the Franklin Templeton Tennis Classic to three Leighton Hewitt leading and what a match this has turned out to be Leaf as Gamble serves now down three four in the final set and Hewitt as we mentioned with that very low stance on the return of serve go long about 15 Gamble has to be careful here. He really has to be careful about P 
picking his spots and finding the right ball to tee off on. Cannot afford to make some unforced errors here. Well, that, that will help. Really Leighton Hewitt is thinking, I've got a second serve here. I'm sure he's saying, geez, I've got to get that second ball back into play. Don't you think Gamble needs a few quick points because he's had to work so hard? Yeah, I think the longer the point goes, the more the advantage goes to Hewitt. Went long. Right inside the baseline, beautifully disguised. Well, besides the inside out forehand, I think the top spin lob is one of Hewitt's favorite shots. Against ball's pretty low. But look at how he just brushes up quickly on the back of the ball and gets it up over Gamble's head. Watch how he gets down. The racket head comes quickly from underneath. It's wide. shot <laughs> his dad a little more unhappy he cannot believe it and now this crowd getting behind gamble he is down break point Listen. Wow. Yeah, it's right Come on, the on. Right on the line. Oh, Ooh. Do you know how close that is to overall? No, no. Do you have any idea? I would have left you it alone if it was close. Oh. Oh. What do you think, Leaf? Well, it was a big point, certainly, for both players. Mm. I thought the ball was good. I thought it creased the line with the angle. I thought it was a good overall. Certainly, Leighton Hewitt has to be feeling like this point got taken from him. If we can get another look, let's see. It's tough to tell from that one, but I really felt like the ball was good. We're looking right down that line up here in the booth. as close as you are, I saw it wide. The first one, the one you, you thought was good, of course. Advantage gamble. Great shot from Jan Michael Gamble. Cross court, and we are dead even after two hours and 14 minutes for all final set. Boy, and these are some great moments. This is what tennis is all about, how players react and handle the pressure. Gamble with a decisive pass, and now it's his turn to pump his fist. A pretty good approach. Look at that, curving out. Leighton cannot make the stretch on the, the volley. First point on Hewitt's serve. Oh, what a shot. 
shot by Gamble. Hewitt tried to open up the court with a little roll in topspin forehand. And Gamble just went over and creased it down the line. Yeah, the quality of tennis now, Lee, is really picked up here in this final set. Four games all. Love 30. The championship on the line. Gamble's sixth consecutive point. What a turnaround. Triple break point. we will get it. Great effort and a better backhand overhead from Leighton Wood. Well, this crowd is really seeing some great moments. I mean, these are just pressure filled. Look at the stretch. Gamble just can't quite get there. Hewitt nicely into the open court. Hewitt in, knocks off the backhand. And I'll tell you, Hewitt has a real instinct for what to do under, under the pressure. I mean, here he is with a short ball. He comes in and plays a darn good ball. I mean, look at this. Down break point. Yeah. And what does he say about that? Yeah. Great reaction. He's trying to build momentum to get back into this thing. Gamble, though, still with another break point. Oh, and he pulls it into the net from the backcourt. And now Jan Michael Gamble has the break. And when we return, Jan Michael Gamble will be serving at 5-4 for the championship here on Fox Sports Day. For both these players as they just crossed over for what could be the final game of the match is Jan Michael Gamble now serving for this title. There's the first point, 15 long. Tough not to speed up a little bit, isn't it, at this point, Leaf? Trying He's to never close won, it out. Never won an ATP Tour title. No call. Look wide from here, but no call. And again, it's a bad break. There will not be an overrule. Gamble with ace number 11, and it was a friendly call. Big serve down the middle. championship point. Fighting it off now, isn't he? Really finding some attack. Certainly not one to quit on this moment. Close call. point for the title. Yeah. And right into 
the tape, and a 40-long lead disappears. It is Deuce. Turn. Rumble hits one of his best serves out wide. And once again, championship point. Good play. Taking a little extra time leaf. Disappeared in that last game lead. A brilliant game. Well, he wins his first title in his first final. And I tell you, I think it's a big breakthrough for him. I think it's going to take a little bit of the pressure off him, and he's going to be a better player because of this. But I think we'll be seeing these two again in another final real soon. Both of them distinguishing themselves here today. A beautiful final here from the Franklin Templeton Tennis Classic. Gamble with the first set in a tiebreak, losing the second and then coming back. Let's have a look now at our Jinsana extra energy point of the match. A high backhand overhead. Hewitt on it. Top spin deep into the open court. Look at the get from Leighton Hewitt. And then the put away on the short forehand. And that's our Jinsana. Extra energy point of the match. Find the energy. Feel your Jinsana. And here is our winner. Jan Michael Gamble in three sets. 7-6, 4-6, and 6-4. And so Jan Michael Gamble wins it over Leighton Hewitt. There's our next tennis in May, early May, the AT&T Challenge. And so from everybody at Fox Sports and the Scottsdale Princess Hotel, and for Leif Shires, I'm Barry McKay saying so long, everybody.